Uh, good morning, everybody. Uh, we are uh, Mohamed Denis Galas and uh, Gregorio Sora Lorente from uh, the Faculty of Architecture and Urban Planning of the University of Mons. We are a French speaking uh, university. We present today our research in a pedagogical context uh, called a data workflow approach for pedagogical sensitization to the BIM uh, concept. So uh, we start our presentation by defining uh, our research uh, contexts as um, I think a lot of uh, uh, faculty of architecture, um, we decided to switch our pedagogical uh, activities from CAD to uh, semantic um, modeling. And uh, if we have a, a brief look in the uh, history of uh, architectural practice, uh, we uh, identify that we uh, use uh, different representation tools that evolve, but they're still using the same abstraction uh, rules, uh, generally based on uh, 2D representation. So, uh, architectural practice is uh, challenging now with uh, new, uh, with uh, the integration of uh, semantic dimension, uh, dimension and uh, it reveals uh, some difficulties to uh, implement um, them. Uh, and uh, when you use uh, conventional processes. At the same time, and uh, concerning uh, BIM methodologies, we are aware of the uh, complexity <laughs> of uh, uh, integrating it in uh, pedagogical activities uh, because uh, BIM is often uh, considered as a black box. Um, and also at the same time, BIM activities are considered uh, by professors uh, as um, incompatible with uh, architectural design processes also. So uh, at the first step of our research uh, challenges are uh, first to make uh, semantic dimension more reliable and uh, uh, if we can uh, say more evident also during the uh, modeling process. Uh, also, to propose a simple and accessible tool for uh, students uh, to manage uh, semantic model uh, structures. Another challenge is to uh, show to students how semantic uh, models could be used to generate different kinds of representations uh, from the same uh, source. And the next step uh, is that uh, we know uh, the complexity of BIM ecosystems, though, so uh, we need to uh, like flatten uh, the BIM concept and assimilate the uh, confusing uh, methodologies to uh, propose more reliable uh, ones. I take the floor. So. Here, we, uh, after talking about the challenges, uh, we would like to explain how we have experimented these topics in, uh, in our faculty. So, to start this part, we are going to enumerate the different results we got from previous experiences of semantic modeling activities. And these results are collected from a student job evaluation and pedagogical surveys. The results are the complexity to understand what is a model or data for architecture bachelor students. Model is often resumed to its 3D representation. The difficulty to understand the link between models objects and the hierarchy between them during modeling activities. The use of complex semantic modeling tools to generate unstructured 3D geometric models. Starting from this result, we propose a first activity to analyze the model structure. We use a friendly graph that integrates the model elements, categories, types, instances, links, etc. And at the same time, we show how the model structure from the graph is implemented in the tool interface. We propose a reverse engineering exercise where students are asked to analyze a sample Revit model in order to create a graph from a given template. 
Therefore, the Revit model is the input of the exercise and the graph is the, out the output considered as a translation of the Revit model semantic structure. We propose in a second activity to flip the process in order to create a Revit model from a given graph describing a semantic structure. So the detailed graph is the input of the exercise. It contains all the needed parameters to build a model in Revit. The Revit model is the output considered as a translation of the graph. As positive outcomes, outcomes we have uh, an interesting integrational level of graph representation for modeling activities, a better assimilation of the concept of data in semantic modeling activities, a better consideration of model concept as a database and not only a 3D representation. As negative ones, we identified a lack of comprehension of relationships between model elements and a lack of self-verification activities, quality tests uh, of the model reliability during modeling processes. Here, we, we present the next step where we develop the semantic assimilation in BIM process. To start this part, we are going to enumerate the different results we got from previous experiences, as before, of semantic assimilation activities these results are collected from student job evaluation and pedagogical surveys. The results are the following. Shortage of BIM modeling skills, non-equitable tasks in the collaborative process, difficulty in understanding modeling objectives, and problems in translating them to model uses and activities. Starting from this result, we propose a new experience, and the goals are to enhance the students' participation in all tasks of a BIM collaborative process and allow them to validate the skills in BIM modeling and collaboration. The proposed experience is based on a gamification process where we create a set of rules that force the students to collaborate and verify the quality of their models. And by the way, they experiment all the possible roles. So. Uh, we, we call this uh, experience um, Beam Town uh, because the game is based on uh, like a shared 49 uh, parcels of EFC models. Students are asked to create walls and slabs respecting a naming convention and uh, property sets as uh, here presented in uh, the right uh, schema. Uh, and um, students to, should collaborate uh, students uh, should collaborate with parcel neighbors uh, to respect these uh, these rules. Uh, we use Teams as an EFC, uh, IFC uh, server and Beam Colam Zoom uh, to visualize, visualize and manage uh, EFC, uh, uh, IFC models. Students are also free to use uh, any modeling tool to uh, create I IFC uh, models. So uh, as a result of, the, uh, of this experience, we have a virtual town of uh, 49 per parcels, integrating shared slabs and, uh, and walls. Uh, students are also, uh, also used um, smart views functions to verify uh, if they respect the uh, naming conventions and also the uh, neighbor uh, rules. After the experience, uh, we ask students to create a semantic model of an existing building by following uh, what we call a flattened BIM process. This BIM process integrates two major goals. Uh, students uh, reach them only if they assimilate the uh, semantic modeling uh, skills. So as a positive outcomes of our uh, experience, we have uh, enhanced the uh, collaboration during the uh, BIM modeling process. We uh, also notify like a better assimilation of uh, BIM goals. As a negative ones, we identify a weakness in a translation of BIM goals uh, to users and uh, activities. The need uh, also to uh, more gamification, like uh, create uh, different levels, challenges, or uh, bonus for students. So we go to uh, finish our uh, pre presentation by uh, the major uh, limits and uh, some conclusions. 
The major limits uh, concerning the feedbacks from uh, the experiments identified, uh, but uh, because we identified some limitations and weaknesses that uh, we hope to improve uh, during the, uh, the next sessions. As a conclusion, we show that uh, there is a clear difference between uh, software le learning and model data uh, structure. We also should consider uh, semantic um, dimension as an important layer in, uh, in architectural models. We need to uh, simplify the BIM concept in order to make it more accessible to uh, architectural educational uh, practices. And finally, uh, it is uh, more useful to create uh, pedagogical use cases to experiment uh, BIM processes and uh, using non-professional uh, uh, contexts. So uh, thank you for uh, your attention. We are really open to share our graphs and models to uh, uh, other colleagues from other universities and also to, we are open to collaborate with them uh, to optimize our, uh, the experimental process. So. Gracias. <laughs> We're on time. <laughs>